What's up guys, my name is Cody. In today's video, we are going to be breaking down some Mutt Drafts gameplay. Got another game for you with the Gun Empty Bunch formation. I want to talk a little bit about Mutt Drafts, kind of a bigger picture to help you get better. And I want to also double down and explain a little bit about why Mutt Drafts is what I believe to be one of the most important modes to master for Madden 21. Here's the couple reasons why. In Madden 21, when you log on to the game, you're going to have two different options or two different primary ways to make coins for your Mutt team. The first way you can make coins is you can grind solo challenges but the problem is if you're competitive like I am you're not going to be able to just grind solo challenges um, you, you're going to you're going to want the competition right you're going to want the competition so for me mutt drafts is kind of a way that I can get the competition you know and still kind of and still kind of make myself some coins and not not get lit up you know what happened to me is i got a little bit of a later start this year than i've ever gotten in mutt and so i don't have the team i didn't have the, the 99 overall team and in mutt this year more than any year i've ever played mutt is 100 percent 100 percent um and not all i mean again it's probably about 99 percent but it is very much so based off the abilities if you don't have a good ability you're going to struggle in mutt this year you just are um and so Draft Champs kind of is one of those modes that gives you an option um, kind of of how you play and gives you the ability to kind of level the playing field, right? You can't pick your playbooks. You can't pick your roster. It's kind of just freestyle mode mutt. And so what I like about it and what it does for me uh, in my game is it helps me kind of be able to get better with a very, you know, on, on a budget, Okay, now, big picture, why do you want to play Mutt Drafts? You want to play Mutt Drafts, number one, so you can get your team better without having to, you know, just sit and play the computer, because I hate playing the computer, I don't know about you, right? But that's one reason. The other reason that you want to do it is because one of the tournaments that Matt, uh, the, the qualifying tournaments that you'll play in, and that is a dot, oh my gosh, I think he, I think he dropped it, but that would have been a really, really good throw. But anyway, all that to say, one of the modes that you would play in in the Madden challenges and tournaments is mutt drafts. So being and being able to understand it, being able to get good at it, it's kind of essential. But it's a very freestyle playing mode, and in my opinion, what it does for me, um, especially in my development, is it gets me back to the basics of Madden, right? It gets me back to the basics of having a couple key plays from any playbook that work really, really well together. And to me, that is one of the really things, one of the big things that will contribute to your success this year, um, really in any year in Madden. Let me see if I can drag Michael Irvin across here. Didn't mean to do that. We're going to bring him back cross throw him in an in route. I love the in route this year. It's kind of one of those slept on routes. Just a simple cross. But what I love about this is it just gets you back to the basics. Right? It just gets you back to the basics. Here we're able to kind of execute that empty bunch. But it really does, right? I mean, it it's the basics of running the ball. It's the basics of defense. It's the basics of red zone offense. Being able to capitalize inside the 10-yard line. Also, it gives you a lot of knowledge about the players, about the way the game plays, about everything. It's a completely different mode than salary cap, completely different mode than head-to-head uh, -head because you don't have any abilities. Again, it's all kind of randomized, but what I like about it is it's very even playing field. I'm not going to go up against a guy that has you know all 99 defensive linemen against my all... Um, you know, 75 offensive linemen and just get blitzed, right? So that's one of the reasons that I really do value this mode, um, just as a way to kind of develop in the early stages of the game. And there he catches me a little bit, and I kind of knew that was coming. I should have should have not come out in that defense. But anyway, so now how do you get good at draft uh, champs? How do you get good at mutt drafts? Simply put, to me, it's all about the basics, understanding the basics of your defense and what you're going to be about. Are you a cover two? Are you a zone? Are you a man or whatever, 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 right? And that was a dot. He's throwing a couple really big time lasers. Also understanding your red zone defense, building your principles for red zone defense, understanding, finding a way to stop the run. All of those things are really, really important in mutt drafts because what most people are going to do here is inside zone. And he, ooh, good run by him. 
good run by him. I should have e- I should have simply pinched the line and probably would have been okay. I just kind of thought he was going to go pass, but understanding the psychology too of the mode, you know, would tell you that he's going to run the ball nine times out of ten in that situation. So that was bad defense on my part, and he evens it up. And now we've got to do a little bit more work than we've had to do in previous games. You've seen some of my other games in mud drafts. It's a very defensive game mode. Very, very defensive game mode. Very safe mode. It's kind of one of those modes where you want to really be simple in your plan. You don't want to have five to ten formations. you you got to be able to execute one or two formations better than everybody else. That's really the core of what Draft Champs, Mutt Drafts is. is your, every playbook is going to have one or two formations that you're going to have, and you're going to want to be able to do all the things that you need to know how to do. Beat the blitz, beat man, beat zone, beat... Um, you know, have a base play, have a power play, have a user route, whatever. Um, but anyway, so that's all of that's why I'm playing mutt drafts. It's really to prepare because for the first period of time in Madden, for the first the the tournaments, right? The way that the Madden series works, and I, and I I might be wrong on this, but this is kind of way I'm thinking about it. The first one is head to head mode. That's where things are going to kind of start. That's the foundational tournament, right? Where you just log on and you play. And that's honestly probably my favorite way to play because it's all based on your skill. It's all based on your strategy. It's all based on your playbook. It's all based on your ability to execute your plan. Then it's going to shift, and I'm pretty sure it goes to draft champions, right? Um, And all the while you have the club championships, the club finals or whatever, where you're finalizing for different things. When it switches to draft champs, what that's going to do is it's going to give you an opportunity to not only make a lot of Madden Ultimate Team coins while you're while you're winning different game modes with draft champs. If you're good and you can win game modes, you're going to be able to run draft champs and be very effective. And then what's going to happen is you're going to take all the coins that you make in draft champs and you're going to apply it to Mutt Salary Cap and then you're going to run for a series in Mutt Salary Cap. Uh, and that's, I think that's typically the last two tournaments or the last two big, big tournaments. So, you know, all that to say, you know, you want to kind of, and, and part of the reason, you know, I like head to head, you, if you want to practice for Madden 21, I would practice in one of those two modes. The reason that I'm kind of going draft champs right now, honestly, is because I think um, head to head has just been getting a little bit boring to me, honestly. Um, because it's literally, you log on with the Chiefs, you run, you know, you run what you run, and, and my mutt team is just so bad that I'm not even able to, I can't even run the ball. I get block sheds like crazy. So for me, mutt, mutt drafts has kind of been a mode where I'm able to have some level of competitiveness, make some coins to try to get my mutt team better, but also learn a lot about the game mode, a lot about adapting your plays, adapting your whatever, and you can see i am got some level of significant comfort with the empty bunch that I would have never had. And to be quite honest with you, the empty bunch might be one of the best passing sets in the game. It's very, very similar to the gun bunch. The only difference is I think the routes from the empty bunch are a little bit more effective on a down-by-down basis, whereas the gun bunch might be a little bit more effective for the big play. But I love this Z-spot route. I think it's the best in route in the game. Just the way that he kind of wraps around. And he does really a good job in there. you got to be careful about getting fumbled. About getting to stripped hit stick. But he does a really good job of not only beating zone, but it beats man because of the, the way that it kind of has a little pivot route on it. So that in route combined with a good corner route on that backside. And then you've got couple of other different routes that you can do you can run your little spot route you can run all kinds of different things off of this you just see here michael irvin will go and i like just putting him on a baby in route this is kind of a a little setup from years ago that i used to run and here he's going to let the seams go with with zeke that's the thing that you don't have as much in the deep corner um, from the gun bunch regular but yeah, anyway, very, very effective formation. I think the in route's a little bit better from the empty bunch than it is from the gun bunch. But again, this is something, this is a formation that you can work out of. This has got everything you need. It's got pass protection. You can have se- seven-man pass protection right across the site like that. You know, you, you can't really go eight-man, I don't think, out of the gun empty bunch. But 
typically this uh, I haven't had any issues with pressure in draft champs. You know, I, I've been able to easily pick it up with with what I've been doing. Now let's see if we can play some defense defensively. You know, it's it, and what I love about draft champs is it teaches you that defense is not all about pressure. It's not all about the blitz. There's so many more components to defense and blitz. And so when they basically take your ability to blitz away, you have to adapt and you've got to figure out kind of a system. How do I stop the run when I don't have nickel 55 wide nine? And that teaches you a lot more. To me, it teaches me a lot more ways to play defense. And it makes me more effective in the wrong, long run because it's all about principles. It's principle-based defense not formation-based defense, right? I'm just as good as anyone when I have my five, six plays, my key formations or whatever. Can you adjust? Can you adapt? And that's something that's really been huge for me. And there you see we're going to catch him again. And that's why I say Draft Champs is one of the most defensively based uh, game modes. And I should not have spun. I should have outran him. But And now you're starting to see us kind of get our get our rhythm here and he he has not stopped z spot yet and you see just the simple reads and and basically if he goes man i've got that left side will take care of that and right side typically will take care of zone but there you see there's that man you see the zig route just roast it and cooper cup just going to run right down the sideline and this was one of my best games so far with the gun empty bunch so hopefully it's Hopefully it's helping you kind of see the power of this. But if he blitzes, so here you show him blitz off that right edge. So I'm watching him. Looks like he's going to press up. Might be a man-to-man. -man. Nope. And there his user just kind of broke him. He had everything boxed. I was almost ready to get sacked. He made one little mistake with his user. But Z-Spot, and I can run that. I mean, depending, and I got to do a little bit better job looking at that corner route right there in the back of the end zone. And there you see it's a possession catch, and it just sits right underneath. And now this is where you start to control a game because when somebody's out of their comfort zone, they don't have a good passing offense, which this year, you know, it's it's a difficult it's difficult to have a good passing offense in this year's game, in my opinion. Because of how, um, just because of the way the routes work this year, I, I've seen, you know, the people that have won Madden, uh, won a lot of challenges this year have been primarily running based offenses. So when you get someone out of their ability to run the ball and he's got to go to the air, now you've got all, you, you're, you've got all kinds of different options that you can do. Let's we'll see if we can't get some pressure here. Got that gun empty tray, so you're thinking verticals. Oh, hit me right in the face. I wonder if I. That's the one drawback is you three two six and all that. You can't get a linebacker in the game. But QB spies are really, really important um, in draft champs and mutt drafts because of the way the ratings are. Because you don't have someone like Michael Vick that's able to just roast you, and you don't have like a, you know, 99 speed. All these people, they're relative enough, they're close enough in ability that if you throw a QB spy on the field, he's going to stay with him. So, you know, again, it's a completely different mode than mutt regular or mutt salary cap. But in my opinion, it's a it's a mode that requires, to me, much more. Oh shoot! I hit the wrong button. I got lucky. I meant to hit the square button and I missed him. But to me, it's a mode that requires a lot more. Not skill, but just a. It's more about can you execute to me than any other mode that I've played. Um, because the abilities can bail you out a lot of times. And when you understand the abilities well enough to build a scheme around them, then what happens is it becomes really difficult to, to, to stop you. Because you've got, you know, you've got all of this, all the tools. And here you'll see a good corner route when he doesn't, 
when he doesn't honor the corner route, you can see it's still effective, even though you're not able to roll out through the dashing dead eye. Because the, the the trick of it was, you know, with dashing dead eye, if you rolled out, you pretty much had him. And here, you see, there's that little user where he just kind of gets lost, and that happens all the time. When you are consistent with Z spot, you can hit him with that Z spot and go. And typically, if they're in a Tampa 2 style D, you know, that's going to be very, very effective. Here, I'm going to kind of try to catch him in five verts here. There we get him. Possession catches this year are just the way to go. But out of a no huddle, I'm going to drag Michael Irvin across. Let's see if we can't get him here. Got him again, back of the end zone, dot. And that's, you know, there you see it. I mean, you have to commit to that in route. And that's why I've said this, to me, is one of the better passing sets in the game, and we've really got him on his toes right now. And you see how it just kind of snowballs when you don't have a good system, good playbook, and draft, mutt drafts. And that's why, in my opinion, you got to have the ability to adjust. you got to have the ability to kind of work with what you have, work with your hot routes, work with work with some of those things and it makes you better because it forces you to be better it forces you to not just have the one or two plays that you've you know you've learned it forces you to kind of adapt a little bit it forces you to learn different ways to pick up blitzes learn different ways to do whatever you're trying to do already and that's one of the reasons that i think if you're trying to practice which at this point we're all trying to practice to get better i would recommend trying to practice in this in this mode because what this mode does is it forces you to get better this is the one mode in my opinion that will force you to get better because the the playing field is semi level you have to you know you have to and it also shows you too it's much less about the scheme than it is about your user right it's much it, it defensively if I have an effective, if I have an effective user user ability, then that's why I say it's a little bit more of a defensive game. Because what I'm forced to do is with my user take away the middle of the field out of cover two, and you see I have enough coverage field coverage in the in the vicinity here, and there he's going to get me with that crossing route. If I can't catch him, he misses him. And went for a catch tackle and it did not work. He slipped one in on me. I did not send the spy early enough on that. But you just want to find a defense, especially if they're going to pass the ball. Uh, I think passing is a lot easier to stop this year than running the ball. Uh, it's just my personal opinion. And here we're going to get him. Oh, oh my gosh, his receiver just made a great play on the ball. But I think it's easier to stop the pass than to stop the run if the person that's passing doesn't really know what they're doing. If the person that's passing knows what they're doing, then you know it can be just as difficult um, no matter what. But you have a limited amount of routes, and we are struggling with that delay read. We're going to need to give some pressure on him here. So I'm going to send seven. And try to get some A-gap heat. Just to let him know we can send some heat. And then immediately going to back it off. So now I watch he'll probably block a guy or two. Yep. And then that spy does most of the work for me. And gosh, dang it. Should have been a pick. <sighs> Here we'll go man. And tight end is manned up. Oh no, dang on it. Let him run the clock out. That's a little bit of game management right there. But just kind of allowing him to hang himself on that one. He didn't get out of bounds. 
But see, draft, mutt, what mutt drafts, because it forces you, because you have a tougher time. It's tougher to move the ball. It's tougher to, um, it really is. It's it's just tougher to move the ball on draft champs or mutt drafts because you don't have, you know, you know the the beast of a of Bo Jackson. You don't have the beast offensive line. You don't you don't have some of the abilities. You don't have dashing dead eye. It's harder to move the ball, right? And so what happens is you've got to be acutely aware. You've got to be very focused on your clock management. You got to be very focused on not turning the ball over. I mean your ability. And there you see that's what I'm talking about with that Z spot route. Right as soon as he cuts inside pass lead, and you can get that nice user catch, and it is going to be very, very reliable for you unless he tries to take it away with his user. And this guy kind of has just allowed me to hit that over and over on him because he's trying to wait, take away a little bit too much on his own. There you see there's that outside pass lead Z spot route that is so effective, so effective. But you'll see, I, I think I've been able to sit in Z-spot for most of the game. He hasn't really made me get out of it. There he goes to a little bit of a man. And that's the mistake you make in draft champs, right? Because you think, you think you're think you used to, at least I'm used to, when I'm a passer. If I'm a passer, it is mandatory for me to have a dashing deadeye. Mandatory for me to, or not dashing deadeye, but escape artists and dashing deadeye. The, those two abilities for me are are like absolutely critical and here you see he's kind of getting me a little bit here because i don't have it but i can't get out of pressure if i don't have dashing dead eye so for me that's kind of why i say if you're going to be effective and let's see if we can't catch him over the top with irvin we're able to get a lot of yards back on that let's see if we can't catch him here with good old faithful z spot we're going to try to hit that middle route and he's just underneath it, so we're going to smart route it so it goes 10 yards right there. And there you see, it just beats man, it beats zone, it beats everything. If he doesn't use the route, it's open. I mean, it's just that simple. And so when you combine that with everything else you can do from this five wide bunch, here you, here you see there he goes to man, and I just need to throw that away. And I don't know enough about the game on the throwaway stuff, but you see one of the issues I'm having offensively, the couple times he's really gotten me is I think partially when I've gone a little bit too fast, haven't paid attention when he's gone to man to man. Those are some of those key moments there. You see, there's that divide wheel play. Now this is a route that I've talked a lot about, but you'll see here. I talked a lot about divide wheel, that quick out route. It's good against man-to-man -man once you motion it out right there. It's just not going to be able to hang with it. So when you're seeing it catching a lot of man, you can run that out route. And it's exactly the opposite of Z-spot. The way the route works is exactly the opposite of Z-spot. So, you know, very, very good. Very, very good route. And here we'll slip him up. And they're still not honoring that deep end route. As you can see, it just roasts man to man. I mean, just roasts it. So getting down in the red zone here. So down in the red zone again, not as concerned with, you know, I would typically get into a running set. And we're just going to throw that away. You see that because he doesn't have dashing at eye, because he doesn't have some of those abilities. He's not able to get open or not able to make some of those key throws that are, in my opinion, really, really important. But you see that back of the end zone throw? It just gets that. It gets that wraparound animation. And if they don't stay with that route, and I'll show you here, I'll go for two. Um, if they don't stay with that route, most sometimes those deep end routes in the back, they'll kind of go out of bounds. And so if they don't stay with it, it's kind of a bad thing. But I'm telling you, if they don't stay with that route, it's wide open. And then if they do go with that, and then you got your drag. But here you see I'll throw it again, force feed it right in there. And you see he just kind of brackets the, kind of brackets the back of the end zone. And that's why, again, that Z spot route 
such that that deep in route from Z spot. And again, it's not the Z spot route, but it's the route in the play Z spot. And it is so effective. So hopefully you guys will try this play out. I mean, you've seen the effectiveness. Now, if you can imagine this specific route with the Chiefs running dashing dead eye, and then you've got maybe Tyreek Hill running a, a deep seam, you know, and that's kind of the the strategy for this whole thing. And here he doesn't know what to do, so he's just going to run it. I think he's just trying to get the game over with. But now we're kind of in the driver's seat. And if we if he comes out, you know, when they come out, if they come out like this, one of the other formations that's actually really, really good that I don't use enough of is this formation bear under, 4-6 bear under. But basically, you see he goes into the gap, so it's kind of like 3-4 bear. And, and they'll kind of hang a little bit better. But you also have the wide nine from 4-3. What I like about 4-3 wide nine is it's it's a formation that is designed to kind of contain everything. And it's going to kind of force them to have to run up the middle. Um, the cover 2 D out of that. And you'll see the, the safeties come out wide like this. And then if they come all, all the way down, what I like to do is pinch the line. And I get roasted. Dang it. That's the only kind of problem with it. Because you're the middle linebacker, if they drop back pass, you've got to get back in the middle of the field. You kind of leave yourself a little bit open to the middle of the field. But it is so good on the uh, on the red zone. All right, here we go. So offensively, you know, it just kind of is up to me to keep executing. Hit me over the top with a good route, good streak. But you see, from the bunch, empty bunch, you have access to all of these other sets. Like, if I wanted to, you know, I could do some, I could do some things out of here. The tight end hook's a really good play. The um, the bunch trail is a really good play. The mesh spot. So I've got more than just the empty bunch. But again, draft champs, because you want to focus so much on execution, to me, it is so, so important to just have a simple few plays that you execute here. And you'll see, I'll just watch his user. If his user doesn't go to the left, I'm throwing that in route. And I, it's kind of like I've thrown this in route so many times in the last week or so. I have so much faith in that route to be able to get open against pretty much anything that he does. If he does not go to that side of the field from the jump, I'm throwing it. I'm going to throw it every time. So literally I'm watching his user here. He doesn't. And he gets me. He gets me on that one. I don't know what he, he did. Some kind of weird man up trick or whatever. Got it. But if I would have waited a little bit longer. And I had Cooper Cup wide open underneath. But basically. So here he's coming out in his goal line package. So you got to think he's going to run it. What I like to do with the middle linebackers. I like to back off. And if anyone goes on a route. I just run backwards deep mill so that that doesn't happen again outside safety blitz is another one i really really like so here i'll go outside safety blitz basically everybody's manned up and then the tight ends if they go up the middle there you see the pressure you're sending a lot of people here i'm going to slip back into tampa 2 looks like he's going to go to a little fake spike and this pass committing is really critical to this. I'm running two slants. Kyle Fracker with a huge, huge interception. Let's see if we cannot throw another interception. Got a little bit, got a little bit cocky on the Z spot and literally was just blindly throwing it, wasn't even looking, and kind of ended up going back to bite me a little bit. I didn't have the timing down on that one. If I would have waited just a little bit longer, he would have opened up across the seam or across the middle. But I got a little greedy trying to show the power of that route. And sometimes you can, you know, it's kind of critical. And that's what draft champions, in my opinion, is supposed to help you do. There you see, if he doesn't go deep middle, I can pass lead that to the inside. Zeke's going to run away with that one. Stiff arm all the way. And he's got a reservation for six in the end zone. 
But you see, as a goal, even if you were just to run this as a goal line play, right? Throw Zeke on a curl, and you got Michael Irvin running his route. And what I would do is put him on a drag route. I'd smart route the this, this zit or the uh, in route, and then you just you can easily just gets to the back of the end zone, wraps around, and there you see it. Um, I think it, I don't know if it got dropped on that one. But in there, he was using it all the way. It just, most in routes, what happens is they stop when they get to the back of the end zone or they kind of post up. What I like about that in route is it just completely drags across and you can high point it if you want. I've, I've not seen high points work as much this year, but you definitely can. So here we're going to go cover three. So what that means is one of the safeties is going to the deep blue. So my job is kind of the underneath. There it is, another interception. And you just see, um, you just see this is, and this is, this truly does. I mean, I'm just telling you, it helps you get so much better on offense. Um, helps you get better at defense too, but it really helps you get better at offense because it forces you to change, right? It forces you to change, forces you to grow. Looks like he's going to probably close out here. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys.